Hello again everybody, I'm Terry Peterman, the Internet Electrician, and welcome again to another one of our video shorts on current topics here at electrical-online.com and on YouTube. We're here in sunny Arizona again, and we are in the backyard project of Rob and Judy Turner, friends of ours. They basically remodeled this entire backyard. And what Rob found after he was all done is that it's just a little bit dark when he's out here working on the grill. So what we're gonna do is add some lighting for him. It's gonna be some mood lighting, and it's gonna be dimmable, so it'll be bright enough as well for task lighting while working on this grill. So I've chosen to use the LED tape lighting as we've done before in a previous project for under cabinet lighting and we're also going to stick with that magnitude constant current LED driver. Nothing better than these, this product, it works well, it's very reliable so stick with what you know and that's what we're going to do. So I've had Rob mount some aluminum channel just up here underneath the gazebo. We've got a power point to feed it from, from their light fixture outlet that's uh, just in the covered part of the patio and that's fed from a switch inside so we're going to be able to put a dimmer on that. It's probably a three wire because it was designed for a fan up there. So we'll open it all up and check that out and plan this project. So let's get started. So here we are looking up now at the light fixture that's under the covered part of the deck. This was designed for a ceiling fan. So I'm expecting we're gonna have a red, black and a white wire up in there. One, we can keep the black wire. We can keep this light fixture on that switch and that new red wire that should be unused up in here we're going to use to feed our LED driver from Magnitude. I'm thinking I'm going to cut a hole in the ceiling and have a place to mount that transformer up inside the ceiling where it's accessible. So that's kind of my plan. And then of course the dimmer inside, I'll show you that location when we get to that. And then I believe we can fish through the ceiling here. It should be an uninsulated part of the ceiling. And then these, uh, this gazebo is made of that aluminum channeling aluminum fake wood looking type of product so that should be able to be hollow inside or that should be hollow inside i should say and i think we're going to be able to fish our low voltage wires all the way out to the end and feed our led strip with that so let's uh, open things up and see what we got All right, so I've taken the fixture down and what we have here is a ceiling fan box. And as I suspected, there's a red, black and a white. So why you pre-wire like this is a, again for a ceiling fan so that you have a hot for the light and you have another switched hot for the fan. So there's a two gang box inside the living room that's gonna be the, the source. The switches are gonna be housed there with the power. This is only switch power out here. So I've shut the power off and we're ready to get started. I think what I'm gonna do is if you notice the area to the, to the left of that ceiling box, the open side there, I'm gonna cut a four by four uh, low voltage plate in there. And that's where I think I'm gonna be able to mount my transformer or the LED magnitude driver for the lights. So we'll get started with that and I'm hoping to fish over through this ceiling space and somehow get through that beam and then inside this aluminum channeling which is the supports for the gazebo. So I've determined that the two foot space to the to the right, I guess when you're looking at the picture here of that octagon box or that round ceiling box for the ceiling fan, that space is all wide open likely on two foot centers. So I've marked with a pencil where I'm gonna cut my four inch, four by four plaster ring so that I can put a, a four inch square plate on that and paint it so it blends right in. And that's where we'll put the magnitude constant current LED driver. So then backing up to here now, I have to use low voltage and I'm fishing through that ceiling space and it's gonna be going up through these holes. I have to drill from this side. I've made two holes in that aluminum beam. And what I'm gonna do is drill up through there with an extension, a long extension bit, going through the beam and up into that space and then I should be able to fish my low voltage wire over to that access box I'm going to cut. 
our access plate, I guess you'd call it. So let's drill this hole. See, this is a long, about a 3 8 uh, auger bit. So I've made a hole through here. I've also drilled through the metal part and the concrete part using a metal bit and a concrete bit just to get through the stucco. Now I should be able to go through the wood all the way into that space. There, I can feel I'm up into that space. Look on the other side, make sure I didn't go through the back of the beam and I didn't. So now we can cut our holes and work on fishing this in. I've started cutting my hole now with the sawzall. I'll just finish it off. There's a little bit of blown in insulation in here, but I suspect that's just what blew over from doing the main part of the house. Okay, now I'll test fit my plaster ring. I guess technically it's not really a plaster ring. What it is is a two gang low voltage ring. So no back box required. We'll just see if we're close here. I use this as a template to mark the hole and I'm gonna have to widen that hole out a little bit on all sides here. So we'll do that. And you see how this ring goes in? These two little wings, when you start tightening the screws, they just move into place and pinch your ring between the drywall and the outside of that ring. Then you can put on a, a two gang plate on that and uh, that covers it up and we can paint that plate to match a ceiling. All right, so I've got my hole cut. I've got the low voltage ring in place. Just tighten these two screws. Just so they're snug. You don't want to tighten them too tight strip them. Now I can reach in here, I can easily fish my 14-2 my, uh, for the 120 volt supply to the transformer or to the LED driver and then fish from here with the low voltage towards the gazebo. All right to fish in from here to there I'm going to use this millipede fishing rod. Now I'm going to get uh, Sandy to put up a link here to the video that I shot on the detailing these milli rods, but basically they're a nylon rod that just threads together. You could put them together as many sections as you need. And I'm just going to go up through my hole there. And actually I can see now the insulation is moving. See that? So I have communication between the two spots. Just need to attach my low voltage cable to the milli rod and pull it through. So I don't have a lot of length to work with here. I've got about two inches sticking out on each side. So I would want to make sure I don't pull that rod out through the hole on the other end. I'm putting on a, a fitting that you can tie the wire to here. I want to make that nice and slim because I don't have a real big hole at the other end to pull it through that beam. So you want to make it as small as possible. I put the wire through that loop and squish it down as tight as I can and then we're just going to put a wrap of tape on it just to make sure it doesn't come undone. And you don't want to add any bulk to that connection either. and then twist your tape. Here's a little trick of the trade. Then you got something to grab onto when you go to try to unwind that. Now we'll go to the other end and pull this wire through. Okay, so back to this end. Gently pull my milli rods back through. 
And there is our low voltage wire. That was the worst part of the fishing job. Now the rest of it's just gonna be getting it through all these, these aluminum channels back out to the front where the LED tape lighting is. So I'll do that and I'll show you what we're gonna, how we're gonna connect things up at the other end. Okay, as you can see, I've got my low voltage uh, spool of wire, what's left over at that end. Then I've fished into the gazebo structure. I've gone over through those holes I made. I'm gonna have to make a nice patch for that and paint it. And then you can see the wires coming out here. Had to go out through an access hole that was for a screw hole and a plug, so I've already fish through there. I'm going to just back this out a little bit. And all the way down to the end of that beam. And I believe you can see the wire coming back out the end here. So now I've just got to mount my tape and drill a couple more holes and do my connections on the low voltage side then we'll finish up on the 120 volt side at the voltage driver a little bit out of focus there back that out okay and i also tested temporarily hooked up and tested my led tape before i go sticking it down into the track made sure that's working and it is so i'll show you how we go about sticking in the led tape and making our final connections on the low voltage side Okay, I've stuck the tape into the track all the way down. I'm just on down to my last foot or foot and a half. And you'll see that we have, I'll give, I'll shoot into a close up of that, but there's lines here that you can cut the tape on and only on those lines. And on the front, there's a little picture of a scissors here that tells you where to cut it. So I'm gonna cut that. It's gonna work out just about perfect. So I'll cut that, stick it into place. Got my scissors and the last mark closest to the end is right here stick the backing back onto the remaining piece of tape although I don't think it's worth using it's not long enough for anything Stretch that nice and tight, and I just tuck the edge of the LED up under the track. And that's done. And there's my LED installed inside that aluminum track. Worked out quite nicely all the way down the whole length of that beam. I just make my low voltage connections, go back to the LED voltage constant current driver, connect it, tuck it into the roof space, and then we'll do our 120 volt dimmer switch inside the house. Okay, so I have made my connections. As you can see here, I've spliced red to positive on the lead that connects to the LED tape, and I've connected white to the negative of the the uh, leads going to the LED tape, which is coming out right here. So I just have to plug that into the tape. I'll stuff all these wires back into this channel and put the caps on on this end and work my way back, putting all the wires into place. So here's the lighting, the LED driver I'm talking about, the magnitude lighting converters. And it comes with everything you need, its own junction box. So your power comes in this side and your low voltage in this side, red on positive, purple on negative. And as you see here, dimmable voltage driver. It's got overload, thermal and short circuit protection. Input is 120 volt AC, black and white. And your output, red is positive, negative, purple. So I'll finish making my connections and then I'm gonna fish this 120 volt wire. I just gotta reach my hand up through my access hole there poke those wires down into the outlet box and tie them in. I'll show you the connections when they're done here. 
All right, I'll get my fat head out of the way here. I've got my connections all made on the magnitude voltage driver, constant current driver for the, for the LED strips. It's gonna get poked up into this hole, which I might as well do right now. And then all I gotta do is put a cover plate on here. I've got my light fixture box all reconnected. So this is ready for the light fixture to be connected to, common neutral. The light fixture will go to the black and I've got my driver tied into the red wire here, sharing the neutral as we said, and the neutral will be shared with the light fixture, so the light fixture will get tied back to here and to the black, and my ground wire with a pigtail so I can ground the light fixture. Put this all back together, and then we're gonna go inside, and the last step is the, is the uh, slide dimmer switch to install. All right, so the final stages are here. I've picked a Lutron slide dimmer. It works with dimmable CFLs and LEDs. It's the DVWCL153PHWH is the, is the part number of this, kind of getting a, a glare off the package. Anyhow, it's a simple single pole installation. That switch can be used with three-way as well, but for single pole, just reading the instructions, it says simply cap off the red with a white stripe. So looking into our junction box that we have to work with here. Just gonna adjust that and zoom in a little bit. Okay, the middle switch there is the one that's for the existing light out there. And then as you see, I've got a black and a red to tie this new dimmer switch into. So there's my black, it looks white, but that's just because of paint. And here's my red. Got to just simply tie them to the black. I've got my red and white capped off. So tie black to black, red to red, green to ground, and put this dimmer back into place and let's test it out. Okay, switch installed, plate back on. Don't forget to break the little tabs. There's tabs on the side of a, a dimmer switch such as this. It comes with its own face plate, but being you're putting it into a three gang box, you need to break off the little side tabs to make it fit in a gangable box like this. Three gang box, I should say. So let's give it a try. We'll go outside and have a look. I'm gonna turn it on and run the little slide up to full brightness and let's see what they look like in the daylight. So I've turned the switch on now, the slide dimmer slid it up to full brightness and that's how they look now. We're gonna come back tonight and just see how effective they are as both task lighting and as mood lighting once you dim them down a bit. And now here's a shot of the fixture back installed and that cover plate in place. Probably have to paint that cover plate to match the ceiling. And we have a few other little cover plates to put on where I had to make holes to uh, drill to fish wires. So there you have the fixture installed, cover plate installed. So thanks again for tuning in. Another completed project of current topics here at electricalonline.com and here on YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel here. That way you'll be the first to know when I have new videos on, as well as check out my website at electrical-online.com. Thanks again. I'm Terry Peterman, the Internet Electrician.